Shall we begin? Okay. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to APAD on this beautiful Saturday morning in our beloved New York City. Uh, it's nice to be here. Thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Stephen Fraley. I am the editor and founder of a magazine called Dear Dave, and we've been publishing uh, three times a year since 2007. Um, and it's, it's, it's my great pleasure to be here with Sean Davey to talk about her work. And let's start with, um, if, if, if you don't mind, I, I think a formal introduction is, is, um, is always appropriate. Uh, Sean Davey is a British artist. <clears throat> Prior to beginning her photographic work in 2014, she was a psychotherapist for 14 years. She received two degrees from Plymouth University in 2014 and 2016. Sean's work has received awards from the Royal Photographic Society, the Aperture Paris Photo Foundation, the Taylor Wessing National Portrait Prize, among many others. She received a fellowship from the W. Gene Smith Memorial Fund in 2019, which I'm happy to say I was involved with. Her work can be seen here at APAD at the Michael Hoppin Gallery booth. Uh, three books of her work have been published by Trolley, and uh, she lives in Devon in the United Kingdom. So, good morning. good morning. Thank you so much for, for agreeing to, to this conversation. Um, and I just also wanted to mention that there are, it's, um, I would suggest to everyone to come down and, uh, and, and be sure to look at the work because it's very important to see the prints and, mm. and to see their, their, their physical presence. Um, let's start in a kind of broad way. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the idea of narrative portraiture. If, 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 if you have any thoughts about that. Um, obviously, you're a portrait photographer. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll talk a little bit later, I think, if, if you don't mind about your background as a therapist. And uh, of course, having that knowledge, I want to discuss with you all the various issues I'm having in my, in my life. You probably get that off. I'm here to help. <laughs> We've got all day. We have got all day, actually. Yeah. Um, so let's start just starting with the yeah. idea with the idea of portraiture, um, and looking at your work, I'm reminded of the idea of a portrait as a narrative device, as a way of telling a story. Yeah. In addition to being about an individual, and I think that's something that's very apparent in your in your work. Yeah, I mean, there's many ways, uh, many uh, facets to that, but in particular, the way that I work mm -hmm. is I'm photographing people to understand my own internal narrative. Photographing people who understand. To understand my own internal yes. narrative. Right. So I need people. Mm -hmm. I need people to, to help me understand what it is I'm trying to work out. Mm -hmm. What is it I'm trying to understand. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of quite loose, but I think if I'm just going to, um, for example, focus in, uh, reference that within the new work, the garden project, mm -hmm. I began with a moment with a single idea, and with a vision, mm -hmm. absence of uh, actually any ambition. And then over three years I'm trying to work something out. Mm -hmm. What is it that has taken me into this new project? Mm -hmm. But then so I'm calling in people to photograph them to help me understand what the story is I'm trying to tell. Mm -hmm. Do, is that understanding does it occur as you're making the work, or yeah. is it a long, is it a longer term pro process, or, pro or perhaps both? It's always incremental, and it could be. Uh, I mean, over three years, there are many conversations that take place within myself. And, and I, I made the work with my son over, so you know, the conversations over the kitchen table mm -hmm. about. So people come with. You know, it could be a conversation that I had with someone I'm photographing. Mm -hmm. It could be about the quality of contact that I had with someone whilst I'm photographing them. Mm -hmm. And these all become um, these moments, it's all about the moments mm -hmm. that lead you to what it is that you're trying to make sense of. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as all art is, isn't it? Right. It's all about telling the story about right now. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're talking specifically about your most recent project, which yeah. is the garden, but it is, would it also be in the previous um, project? 
parents in terms of your in terms of your daughters. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, with Martha, I had a very challenging childhood in um, homeless accommodation, really, on and off until I was fourteen, and. So my recollection of my teenage years was actually fraught with anxiety mm -hmm. and deep uncertainty and panic, actually. Mm. And that, so, sounds, that sounds dreadful. Yeah, it was, you know, it was difficult, but also yeah. rich material for growing up, isn't it? Sure. You know, it's rich material for work. And so I, with the work with Martha, I, um, I was really creating new evidence of that at those adolescent years. Mm -hmm. There, there's a quote that I that I, I jotted down here. When, uh, apparently, when you uh, were discussing the project with Alice, mm -hmm. um, at some point you were quoted as saying you, that that she comes into this world with a history of trauma. Yeah. Which is which is a really fascinating idea. That that the trauma is 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 embedded. But we have intergenerational trauma. And I think we understand it more now. Mm -hmm. And you know, neuroscience is looking more deeply into how that works, you know, how the brain functions, mm -hmm. and how through psychotherapy, through psychoanalysis, whatever you know, route that you're taking, mm -hmm. it's actually about rewiring the brain. Mm -hmm. Did you? Um, were there photographs in your in your childhood, in your in your in your family? Did 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 people make photographs in a conventional way? No. At events, birthday parties, camps? I have none. None? No. Isn't that fascinating? It's really I mean, of course, we live in a time now that everything it seems to get, Absolutely. Get, get photographed. But I think this is something more about my family, mm -hmm. because I know that other people have their families documented. Right. And so I don't have any visual reference of my childhood. And photography was never something I was interested in. Sure. I mean, I began my first degree was in fine art painting, right. and my second degree was in politics and social policy. And I, did, I think the does the your your interest in social policy mm. does it does it influence does it animate your work now? Absolutely. Yeah. My work is deeply political. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to, to, to have that out out in the conversation. I was because this, in particular the, the, the work in the garden feels ideological. It, it, yes. it feels humanist. It feels very deeply like it wants to gather people together in such a way that honors their their individuality. Absolutely. Which is what it's about, you know, if it, I mean, I campaigned heavily about social inequality. Mm -hmm. And of course, we, right now we have governments that don't mm -hmm. represent us. Yeah. And it's a nightmare right now. It's an absolute nightmare yeah. and has been for a long time. Right. And um, so the work is about, um, I wouldn't say the word celebrating difference. It's about actually we're less different than we imagine we are. Same we're less different than we imagine we are. Yeah. And so the work isn't about the individual, it's about the collective. Mm -hmm. And it's about, you know, I don't want to um, give a critique about the work, but my sense is it's about non-duality. Mm -hmm. so, so the work isn't captioned, right. it's irrelevant to, to put one person to set aside one person against the other. Mm -hmm. It's just about all of us. The work is titled, so it's, it's, I believe it's the garden and there's a room and new room. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because the moment you start separating people, separating people out, you compartmentalize people. Mm -hmm. I can't, from reading about the, the body of work, I came to the conclusion that it was also influenced, of course, by COVID and by the isolation and the fear that we all felt in, 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 in 2020. I believe the work started that, that summer, that, that year, maybe the year after. Yeah, it wasn't about COVID at all, actually. <laughs> but, but, but not about COVID, but maybe, maybe. But I, mm, go but, ahead. Yeah, the work was, uh, uh, it happened about that time, but it was quite interesting. There was this huge paradigm shift that happened mm -hmm. that 
everybody, actually. Mm -hmm. Things happen to people, and it wasn't about necessarily about the disease. It no. was somehow this this chaos, this rupture, mm -hmm. changed people's lives enormously. People Absolutely. separated, people moved, located, people changed their jobs, people kind of reconnected to themselves. And, right. You know, and I think still changing our lives in ways that we might yeah. not be Absolutely. aware of right now. Yeah, and for the, me... The repercussions will... Yeah, of course, it will reverberate for Sure. Because, you know, we're going into a virtual world. Right. That kicked off in yeah. COVID. Yeah. Um, but... So you and your son... Yeah. ...devised an idea to plant this, this extraordinary garden. Yeah. And w which is, the, the garden seems from the photographs to be so immersive and, and, and so fluent in terms mm. of the various species of, it really is, an, it feels like it's an extraordinary place and somewhat different than my feelings or my, my associations with the English garden, yeah. which, you know, feels very organized. Yeah, well, my son said, why didn't we, I mean, my, um, I was deep in conflict and crisis at home and navigating the most extraordinary um, pain at the time. And my son said to me, why don't, I, why don't we turn on that garden into something so beautiful mm -hmm. that people would want to be photographed by you? Mm -hmm. He connected to the despair that I was feeling and offered me something. And our garden had been abandoned for many years. And so I'd left my partner, and actually I couldn't do the back garden. And mm. the back garden interested me in Jungian terms. Mm. And when we look at the shadow, mm -hmm. what we can't see about ourselves, mm. okay? Mm -hmm. People can see each other's shadow. Right. They can see their health, they can see their struggle in a way that we often can't see our own. My back garden somehow that became my shadow. And the, mm. when we resurrected the garden, we resurrected something with, deep within myself. Mm. And, um, but he was the architect of the garden. He was like, he planted anarchistically in the garden. I mean, it was a crazy thing he did. It feels a bit like, it, it, it feels a bit, uh, a bit like a floral anarchy. But yeah, it, it sounds it. So, it, 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 was there an actual template that he followed in terms of? The, no. Mm -hmm. He planted how he wanted the garden to feel like, not what he, not what he wanted it to look to feel like. Right. And the, that was absolutely pivotal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we we planted under the um, biodynamic calendar. We planted it organically. We made, we're both Tibetan Buddhists in practice. Mm -hmm. And so we were making prayers. We were praying, making prayers to humanity. Mm. That's very grandiose. I, I, I don't mean that in a negative no, sense, but, 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 I, but I appreciate the ambition. Yeah. yeah. And Devin also has an interesting climate, I believe, because I remember seeing I remember seeing palm trees in Cornwall yeah. and being very surprised, but yeah. then having been informed that it had something to do with the, the Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream, yeah. that's right. Yeah. That's just a bit, um, it's about 10 miles from where I live. Wow, okay. Um, but where I live, um, I rent my home on this place called the Dartington Estate, mm -hmm. and it's home to, historically, to artists mm -hmm. and thinkers and writers. So. When I arrived there, um, 10 years ago is when I picked up the camera. Mm -hmm. So picking up the camera, leaving psychotherapy, yeah. picking up the camera, and moving to this magical place. Really magical. Yeah. It, 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 all, it all came together. Yeah. Um, the, the project with Alice occurred there also. And Martha. Okay. I made all my work from my home. Okay. So, well, you know, we talk about photography as being collaborative really very frequently. It's, yeah. It's a, but I think it seems to me that is one of the characteristics of your work, which is more depth than we usually. Yeah. I mean, it really does feel collaborative in, in, the, in, the, in the deepest sense. Absolutely. 
you're collaborating with f first two members of your family, two female members of your, your daughters. Yeah. And in that collaborative process, as you've just described, you're also understanding yourself more fully. Yeah, I mean, I'm very fortunate. I have, I've also made a, um, a piece of work about my other son. I've got four children mm -hmm. on large format. Mm -hmm. So my children have been instrumental in, in my, um, in helping me really understand something quite profound about mm -hmm. the world. And, mm. That's what they've done. I mean, I right. stand sitting here now thinking, wow, that's extraordinary. Yeah. That well, but parents, parents say that in the best case scenario. Yeah. But the remarkable thing is, is that you're, you seem very conscious of it and you're able to document it. I use the word document loosely. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're able to almost cultivate it through the process of, make, of making pictures. So it's an awareness of it. And I mean, there, there's other photographers. I, I was looking at the work last night and I was thinking of Eleanor Carucci's work. Yeah. And Sally Dan's work. Yeah. And, e and even, um, even uh, Julia Margaret Cameron. Yeah. Just saw a wonderful show of hers at the, at the, at the National Portrait Gallery. Um, so there are precedents in terms of family and family narrative yeah. and the understanding of that process. But I think in your case, it, it, it's, it seems particularly deep and, I had a lot to work out, and you don't step out of my childhood. You know, it either becomes you or you, or you take hold of it. Right. And I took hold of it, and it's been a lifetime's work taking hold of it. Mm -hmm. And um, so I have these um, extraordinary um, offerings that I have mm -hmm. and evolutions in mm -hmm. my lifetime. Mm -hmm. When I started um, to make work, they went straight on to the master's program. And I was invited, we all asked to, um, we were given a photographer mm -hmm. to take home this study. And I remember the, the, um, the tutor said, the professor said, uh, you don't know a single photographer? And I said, no, I don't. Right. Anyway, I took home, she, she gave me Julia Margaret Cameron. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. What happened was very profound. That was your choice of the yeah, their choice. Yeah. Well, actually, they were just kind of distributed them, kind of, you know, just um, sure. randomly in the kind group. Of a, a deck of cards. Yeah, like a deck of cards. And I, and I, I took her home, and then I read her history. She started photographing the you know, same age. She had four, four children. And as I read her history, I literally got goosebumps, and it felt like she was standing next to me, and that she was giving me a transmission, that she was signposting me to make work. Hmm. And even more interesting, mm -hmm. someone said to me yesterday, you know, over dinner, she said she gave up after 10 years. Yes. I'm giving up after 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I've actually... Um, you are giving I up. I think I'm giving up, okay. yeah. And um, I'm moving into another process. That gives us how many more years of work? <laughs> how many more years? Well, I've been making work for 10 years. So you're thinking of, a, of another transition? I'm working on another transition yeah. right now because I'm, um, um, I'm writing a book about this process that I've designed to liberate creativity. So I have people coming all over the world to work with me on the creative body process Amazing. to um, liberate their voices and their practice. Amazing. The, the idea of transition yeah. seems to be really important in, the, in each body of in each body of work. Yeah. From what I understand, it's not a stable or um, it, it's not a static situation. No. It's 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 the understanding of your of your daughter, Alice. Yeah. And you talked you you you've, you've talked about the anxiety that you felt in relationship to her. She has she has Down syndrome. Yeah. And then the coming of age of your daughter, Martha. Yeah. And understanding that incredible transition and maybe celebrating now that we know a little bit about your difficulty as it. Yeah. And, and, and then the, the transition of, um, in the garden of, of a, a sense of, to, to a sense of community. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
made every transition. I mean, all artists know the struggle, isn't it? Without the struggle, there's no understanding. It's obviously the, um, the conversation and, and the debate about AI at the moment. Sure. And, and all art speaks of a window of time. And without art, you don't evolve. Mm -hmm. And I think, and on a personal level, that's my experience of it, mm -hmm. that I keep evolving through my work. Mm -hmm. And you have to be fairly fearless to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, because you know, fear inhibits you and keeps putting you back into old habits and patterns. Sure. And through my work, I've having to be quite fearless about it. And you know, I have disappeared for three years making this work. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. It's one of the things that uh, has intrigued me for so many years about photography, and especially as a as a teacher, is yeah. that there are so many. It, it is capable of fulfilling so many different agendas, yeah. based on one's character, based on one's temperament. Yeah. And again, in your case, your relationship to photography seems provisional. In a, in a way, or that, that it is a vehicle. It's a vehicle, yeah. It's a vehicle. And, it, and now you're, you're ready to, to move on to another vehicle. Yeah. And I think, you know, if you are... I mean, everything is a transition. I mean, I was speaking to one photographer last night, and she mm -hmm. said, I've been in this for 30 years, and I still love it. But you have to commit to what you love. Sure. And when you commit to what you love, you thrive in it. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm not saying I'm going to give up photography, but there's some enough, there's another calling going on. Absolutely. Well, one has to choose the best vehicle for their, yeah, absolutely. for their, their, their heart. Yeah. And, and that can be really intimidating. Very intimidating. Yeah. But that kind of wobble. Wobble, I like that. It's a good word. Wobble, wobbling. Isn't it? It's like, <laughs> as we're trying to recalibrate the world and understand it. And um, there's a lot to navigate, isn't there? Yeah. And uh, I hope you don't mind my speaking of this, but you're, you're a Tibetan Buddhist. Yeah. I'm both Christian and Tibetan Buddhist. My focus Simultaneously? Is, or? <laughs> you know, well, they both work together. I mean, I think Tibetan Buddhism offers a very clear um, route mm -hmm. through suffering. Or do you have a Catholic background, or is it? No, I don't have any religious background at all. Mm -hmm. In fact, when I was a child, I used to take refuge in a church to get away from my parents. Oh. And, I, and I wasn't even conscious that I was re religious, but I'd go and sit in a church. It was just a safe, it felt like a safe place. Yeah, just a safe place for me, because um, I didn't have any sense of belonging. And the church gave Do you have siblings from, from that? Yeah, but I don't see my siblings. I mean, we literally, I left home and I just walked and walked right. away. So in this, extraordinarily, you've made this, you've made a new family. Yeah, I made, I've made many new families. Mm -hmm. And my, so even now the creative body process, the people that come over to the UK to work with me, they're all here in New York. Mm -hmm. So, at my talks, they come to my talks. Mm -hmm. There's another quote that I wanted to, <clears throat> which I think relates to what you just said, and you, you, you've said that one of the things that you're engaged in is how people hold their history in their bodies. Yeah. Which seems to be coming, with what you've described in terms yeah. of the future, seems to be coming into the foreground. Absolutely. But I think at the same time, you know, when I'm working with, um, when I'm working with anyone, actually, in terms of, you know, okay, let's keep it to photography. When they walk in the room, I know what they're holding. Because you, mm -hmm. you see how they're holding it. Mm -hmm. And, well, your experience as a therapist. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you can see their developmental history in their body and what's happened to them. Mm -hmm. So I know how to... Mm -hmm. I know how to... I know where the, where the boundary is for them. Mm -hmm. You don't want to invade someone's boundary. Mm -hmm. You don't want to hurt someone. In fact, you want someone to thrive in front of the camera and to feel extraordinarily at ease to be who they are right. and not who they feel that they, they should be for you. Sure. And so that's the skill yeah. in portrait photography. Going back to that. It's, going yeah. through, it's, a, it's a place of kindness and yeah. generosity. There is a tenderness to all of, all of the work. There, there, there's a sense of compassion and 
just a real gentleness. I have so. Yeah. Thank you. And it's, it's, it's interesting in, 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 in the project about Martha, it's also interesting to watch her as she acknowledges you. Yeah. And especially in the pictures that she's with her group of friends and her group <laughs> of friends are doing great things. Yeah. And it's almost as if she's the still place within that activity, but she's looking right at you. She's looking at right at me. And I think, you know, she's my stepdaughter. Ah, uh, okay. That's quite key to it. It's a and more complicated. Much more complicated. And, you know, her mother's um, couldn't bring her up. She's bipolar. Mm -hmm. And so there was a real need and longing from her somewhere within all that to mm -hmm. be, to find her place with me right. and to be witnessed. You know, so I won't get too much into that, but I think that was kind of very key to the piece of work that we made. And also, she project managed the work. Right. So she'd ring me up and say, you know, we're partying. We've been out all night. Amazing. We're down by the river. Amazing. Come, come and find us. And actually, um, because I'm really playful, uh -huh. I'm not for anything. So it was just really good fun. And so I began the project being, who's that person over there with the camera? Mm -hmm. To, I just, I just disappeared amongst, amongst them. Mm. I became completely invisible. Amazing. They were totally ambivalent. Yeah. But they were also on their, on their on their cell phones at the time, so. Yeah. Yeah. Cell phones. I so Martha would pick, ring me and she'd say, well, you just leave me a nightclub. Mm -hmm. So she'd ring me at four in the morning. So she really was the creative director. Oh my gosh, she was really good. <laughs> in fact, she is, she yeah. was, she is everywhere she goes, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. What is she doing now? Well, actually, she was an academic. Mm -hmm really bright, very successful academically. And I'm really pleased she's given that up. Mm -hmm. So now she's training as a florist. Amazing. And she's deeply committed to flowers. So that's quite interesting. Right. My, all my children seem to be committed to growing flowers at the moment. And, this, <laughs> and the son who planted, is his name Luke? Yeah. Who planted the, helped plant the garden? Has he been photographed in the garden? I can't photograph him. It doesn't work. Yeah. You can't inhabit the space in the camera. I have tried relentlessly. And actually, in the short film I made, we did in free screen about the, in the garden on Super 8, mm -hmm. 16 mil. You can see why he can't inhabit. Mm -hmm. But he's um, currently studying with Alice Oswald, uh, Alice Oswald and um, in poetry and creativity. Wonderful. And, um, and my other son is on Holy Island. Mm. He left at the age of 18 mm -hmm. to go in, um, he's been in a Buddhist remote island for two years. That's extraordinary. I think it's extraordinary. Yeah. Um, you, you have, you have, you have this family that your, your influence seems apparent and the collaboration, using photography yeah. as this collaborative vehicle, as, 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 as a way to understand them and for them to understand you. I think it's, we used to joke in, in, in photo programs about the idea of phototherapy. Yeah. And it, we used to joke, you know, in a kind of cynical New York, New York way. But um, it really feels to me to be really authentic and to have extraordinary purpose. But life is about purpose. Mm -hmm. And so when we lack purpose and we can't find our purpose, it makes us sick. Mm -hmm. It makes us very ill, doesn't it? Yeah, physically, mentally, mentally, emotionally. And then when we find purpose, then we are connected to lives, connected to ourselves and yeah. each other. Um, so it's not that actually rocket science, anything I'm saying, is it? Yeah. It's nothing new I'm saying. Yeah. It's just how it is. Yeah. And um, so this next uh, adventure that I'm on mm -hmm. is a very exciting adventure. Well, let's come and meet back here in a, in a <laughs> yeah. couple of years. I wanted to ask you one last question yeah. because, as I mentioned yesterday, I saw the installation at the um, Photographer's Gallery in London. 
um, there's a terrific installation of pictures from the garden yeah. that are outdoors. They're quite large. They're they're, they're fairly high on the on yeah. But it's such an uh, I happened to be there. It was a miserable day. It was it was gray. It was raining. Yeah. Um, fairly typical, I guess. Yeah, very typical. But, but there was this wonderful wonderful garden that that, that was there, and it, it it felt so good. At the same time, I had to, I, I didn't, I couldn't figure it out, but it, it felt like advertising to me, simply because of it's a, it's a public street, yeah, and the scale felt like billboards, and you're looking, looking up at it. So I finally came to the conclusion that it is, if one needs to call it advertising, it's an advertising for a kind of utopia, that there, there's no pro product that needs to be purchased. Absolutely. But, but it simply is an advertisement for a, a potential life. And, and it, felt, it felt pretty good on the, on the mean streets of London. Yeah, I mean, it's when it first went up, I mean, it's the 80 inch freezes, and then in the evening, of course, you can see the film mm -hmm. projected on the wall. And, and I've been also on my. I didn't realize I didn't Yeah, so this. in the evening, you'll see right. the film. And. And then my son and I were recording the birds on every full moon at sunrise for the year. Every full moon. Oh. So you could hear the birds on. So we were creating, and it's over three years, this immersive experience where um, I disappeared in creative, into, into creative practice. It was mm -hmm. an excavation of everything that was possible in the space. I'd be mm -hmm. placing bells. People were coming from all over the world to camp in the garden. and. To be to somehow the conversations were extraordinary actually, and so it was pressing flowers and recording and. I'm writing. sorry, you're talking about the actually, actually people coming to the garden itself. Yeah, coming to the garden itself. I mean, the garden was extraordinary what yeah. we created. I mean, it was we were making these immersive structures, and so when and planting. Um, you know, I can't begin to tell you how extraordinary the planting was, that when the flowers opened, I, there was nothing that I needed to do because nature did that for me. Mm -hmm. That people disarmed, and when they came in the garden, you could physically, emotionally feel them lose their sense of self. Mm -hmm. They came back into... They, need, they, they, they came because they, they were seeking them. Well, people came for all sorts of different reasons. Sometimes sure. there was an invitation for me. Sometimes people emailed me, said, can I come to your garden? Mm -hmm. Every person that was in the garden, it was as though they were meant to be there. Mm -hmm. And... Um, but you wouldn't always photograph them. The, the photographer making the pictures was a different transaction with people from the community. Yeah, I mean, I photographed everybody that came in the garden. Wow. So people stayed on the other side of the garden. But these structures were enormous. I mean, I was out there every day weaving and winding gourds and trombogenas and everything that was climbing to get it to move in different directions. I was sourcing the right furniture. Mm. I mean, it was creative. It was so fun. And it's done. It's, it's, it's finished. There is no garden. It has been... Well, my son is actually at home. Um, we're working on it this year, but nothing like. I mean, I haven't. I've been in the garden for three years. Some people said, "Did you just throw some seeds down?" Yeah. No, I really didn't throw some seeds down. I wonder if the excavation of the garden, in and of itself, is, if not a photographic project, at least a a part of the ritual, which is really important. Yeah. To to, to de dig into the ground and and, and to remove it. Yeah, I think. Um, project was um, actually, people say, are you carrying on with the garden? And I said, there's no need to. Right. You know, I'll, I'll, we'll tend to the garden. But the garden, I didn't know, and I hadn't understood until the very end that it was a prayer. A prayer? It's a prayer. The garden was a prayer. 
that as I relinquished control, as I trusted in life, as I leaned into humanity, that, um, that there was only help. And you, you've talked about the garden as being a, as being a heart, as being the equivalent to yeah. the heart. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And so the unraveling of me was the kind of um, it just showed me what I needed to see. Yeah. And that's kind of that's what art is, it's, isn't it? It's done. Yeah. Then it's actually done and yeah. hooked. The project showed me that. Mm -hmm. And then of course we made this book. So three months later, yeah. I have the book now. And my neighbor came around and said, we never knew what you were up to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he said, we saw you know. out there yeah. cultivating all hours, watering into the night. I right. mean, it was a full-time job. And then he said, and we saw you out with your camera, kind of Polaroid, large format, medium format. Yeah. No one knew what you were up to. Seems like such a nurturing community out there. Kind of. Yeah. They're all artists, they're a bit grumpy. Yeah. Artists are a bit grumpy. Yeah. Yeah. You can't help it. <laughs> um, um, I think we should. I, 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 I would like very much to, to, to leave on the, the idea that you just, yeah. that, you know, the, the, the sense of it as being a, um, a place for the heart and a place for your transition and for, you did, you did call it a prayer. A prayer. Yeah. It's a prayer. It's a prayer. A prayer. It's a prayer. And it's a prayer that, um, yeah. in this time of uh, conflict, um, it's a prayer for all of us. Yeah. I think we'll see that. Yeah. Okay. Thank Thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all for being with us.